Beach. Welcome to episode 11 of the How to Survive podcast. Uh, I'm Joe. I'm Chris. This week we're talking about Friday the 13th part 2, meaning it must have been 10 episodes since the Friday the 13th part 1 episode. Our unofficial rule is that every 10 episodes we will do another Friday the 13th episode. Absolutely. Yeah, meaning it will be two years <laughs> before we finish the entire series, if yeah. you include uh, remakes and, and Freddy vs. Jason. Yeah, it'll be a long time. Mm, it will. Yeah, if it you haven't will. seen the film, as always, mm. we just talk about the, the whole film, so uh, if you haven't seen it, you have been warned. Yeah, I know, to be fair, you have seen the film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you haven't seen the film, you've seen the film. Yeah. Okay, so a, a, a quick plot summary in case uh, you need a refresher mm-hmm. or you, you don't want to watch it. Uh, so it's set at... I mean, there's, there's an intro, mm-hmm. which is kind of a, a picking up where the last film left off almost. Yeah, a couple of months after the, yeah. the previous film. Uh, where Alice, mm-hmm. uh, the victim of the first film, is murdered by someone. Yeah. We don't know who that is yet, but we can... I mean, through the benefit of our pop cultural pop, knowledge, we know yeah. it is Jason. Yeah. Jason Voorhees, who... And it, I mean, it's also telegraphed pretty strongly by the fact that she goes through about 10 minutes of flashbacks where yeah. they're just talking about Jason. That was... That was I, I haven't seen this before. Mm. That is such a bizarre intro. Yeah, it is. It's like, so you open on the footsteps and the, the figure walking up to a house. Well, not even that. You open on a kid yeah. sort of skipping in a puddle. Yeah. Who's then called inside. Yeah. And then... Almost immediately, as soon as he leaves the frame, Jason's, yeah. well, a foot, who is Jason, steps yeah. into the puddle. Yeah. And then proceeds to go into the house where Alice is. Yeah. And she, she's she's, going she's having a She's having nightmarish flashbacks. Yeah. To about uh, the, the incident with uh, Pamela Voorhees on a, on a scene-by-scene basis uh, with the benefit of uh, seeing the twist... Uh, and everything, um, which is obviously all stuff that happened in Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah, I mean they they play out basically the last fifteen minutes in. Yeah, it's weird. Though. Yeah, it's, it's arduous. It's like previously on Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah, basically. Yeah, it's strange. Mm. Like I've never seen a film do that. Well, that's there's a reason for that. It's because it's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so she's. Summarily murdered by Jason. Yeah, an uh, ice pick to the temple. Yeah. Which is a shame, because I think she could have been a sort of Ripley character to carry the, to the franchise, but mm-hmm. not to be. Yeah. It could have, you know, it could have been a good pairing. Yeah, no, it's true. Nemesis. Like a sort of nemesis. Um, yeah. Person and the nemesis. Sort of yeah, thing. but instead, you know, uh, any, any affection you felt for her, forget that. <laughs> uh, so she's killed. Then we come back to the present day, which is actually 1982 when the movie came out, it kind of takes place back at Camp Crystal Lake. So there's a gathering of counsellors who are being trained in how to be counsellors. Yes. Led by... Uh, Paul. And I won't go through naming all of them. Well, I've got all their names here. Oh, okay, as well as... Yeah, uh, descriptions, of them. Yeah, uh, okay. handy descriptions. Thank you. Um, so I'm not going to give any context to these. I'm just going to assume that the person has seen the film Yeah. and they know exactly... Uh, who, this, who, will, this will trigger the people we're yeah. talking. Yeah. So uh, there's uh, Paul, who's played by John Fury, right. and he's the coordinator. Yeah. Uh, there's Ginny, played by Amy Steele, who is the survivor. Right. Uh, there is Terry, played by Kirsten Baker, who is skinny dipping. Right. Uh, <laughs> there's Ted, played by Stuart Carno, Charno, who is the Joker. Right. Uh, There is Mark, played by Tom McBride, who is the wheelchair man. (laughs) There is Vicky, played by Lauren Marie Taylor, who is wheelchair fancier. Uh, And then there is Crazy Ralph, making a a reappearance. Always good to see him. Uh, Played by Walt Gurney. Yeah. Yeah, so there's there's a motley crew of individuals. I mean, it doesn't matter who they are, in a way. The character development is nil. (laughs) <laughs> they are just teenagers on a campsite. Yeah. Uh, Not Camp Crystal Lake, though. No, it's, it's um, an adjacent, adjacent one. Yeah. An adjacent one. Uh, okay. It's like Jason. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Adjacent. Adjacent one. <laughs> <laughs> so they're, they're near Camp Crystal Lake, where the previous murders took place, 
and obviously the discussion is all about the murders what of last happened? year. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure the time frames actually actually is as clearly. No, set it's, out. it's five years, I think. Five, yeah, but um, which is what it would have to be mm. for it to be another Friday the Thirteenth. Really? Yeah. Uh, Friday the 13th, 1979 mm-hmm. was in July. Friday the 13th of July, 1979. Friday the 13th of July, 1984 is, I believe, the specific date that they're intending this to be. Well, well. Yeah. Good research. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to piece together... The... So, basically... I'm I mean, motivated I mean, to... I mean, if you've seen Friday the 13th 1... Yeah. It's exactly the same plot. Yeah. Like, I mean, they, they get picked off one by one by a killer. Yeah. Uh, we'll get into their murders yeah. later, but Ginny is the final survivor. Yes, or but, the, the, the I mean, one of the final. The big payoff is the final showdown, which mirrors the one between Alice and Mrs. Voorhees in the last one. Yeah. This time between Ginny yeah. and Jason, Jason Voorhees, uh, and it, it spoils across the camp. It goes into his his hut mm. where yeah he, he has a shack that's yeah. in the middle of the woods which he's built himself. Yeah. Which, Earlier on in the film, we see a sheriff go in there. Mm. Um, classic horror movie sheriff. Yep. We love them. Yep. Uh, goes in there, gun drawn, completely loses all situational awareness when he's confronted by what we later learn is a shrine with uh, Pamela Voorhees' head. Yes, and jumper. And jumper. And Gin- when Ginny arrives there, mm-hmm. there's also the body of one of her campmates. Yes. Uh, which he's dragged back there. The showdown takes place. Jason takes a machete through the shoulder. Yeah. Uh, he takes an ice pick to the neck. Yeah. And in many ways, like um, like Michael Myers, who we'll talk about next week. Yeah. He's pretty much unbeatable. Yeah. And the, the ending is so messed up. I just I. It's bizarre. Can you explain it? To me? So, uh, so Ginny and Paul. Yes. End up in the shack, and with their combined efforts, they subdue Jason. Mm-hmm. They then go back to their own hut. And then they're in there, and then there's a knocking on the door. And the dog that we thought was dead earlier, because they find the body of a dog, which they think is, is it Marshmallow? Muffin. Muffin, Muffin the dog. (laughs) They think it's Muffin the dog. But then Muffin the dog shows up, so it's just another dog. That was like a fate for all the people in the audience who were terrified that the dog was actually (laughs) dead. They're like really relieved, right? So it's like, oh, thank God the dog's dog's alive and then out of nowhere Jason now without mask. a hood because mm. um, he's, he's not he's, he's not his iconic, iconic mask, mask. Yeah. Yeah. he's wearing a hood yeah. he dives through the window and tackles Ginny and then there's a sort of fade to black yeah. and then Ginny wakes up the next day the ambulance are there and it sort of mirrors the end of the first film where they um, the ambulance people are just like well we, you're the only person we found right um, and she's loaded off into the ambulance, yeah. taken away, uh, and then it, and then you see the shrine again with Pamela Voorhees' head. Yes, and that's how the film ends. Yes, uh, so we don't know what happens to Paul. We don't know what happens to Paul. We don't know what happens to Jason. Yeah, we don't know really know what happens to Ginny. No, we don't know what happens to any of the campers. No, we don't know what happens to <laughs> Pamela Voorhees' head. Do, except do you want, he remains so, on the table. Um, a, a few weeks ago, we talked about IMDb trivia. Right. Um, similarly, on a similar thread, I was looking at the IMDb page for this film, right, in, in and a plot synopsis mm-hmm. caught my eye. And um, just, I don't know if it's just the way this is written, but I really, I really loved it. Okay. Okay. It so is, yeah, it's, it's much better. It's probably a better synopsis. Than it'll probably make sense it. more sense yeah. than what you've done. Yeah. Yeah. So here we go. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is written by E. Melodic. After killing Mrs. Voorhees who is avenging her son Jason's death, Alice Hardy can finally sigh with relief, but there is just one problem. Jason never drowned at Camp Crystal Lake and lived in the nearby woods as a hermit all this time. The day that Alice beheaded his mother, Jason saw everything and his heart filled with thirst for revenge. Two months later, Alice gets stabbed by an ice pick in the temple and disappears. Disappears? (laughs) Is Jason behind this? <laughs> Five years later, a camp next to Camp Crystal Lake is built, and the councillors start snooping the old, abandoned camp ruins. This makes Jason very upset, since his shack is next to the remains of Camp Crystal Lake, and what is inside the shack shall be kept secret forever, even if it means killing nine people. I like it. So that's his motive? To 
to presumably preserve the integrity of, of his, his shrine to his mother. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Well, I mean that. So a couple I mean, of, I'm glad <laughs> E melodic saw more in this plot than I did. Yeah. The things that I like, I really like about that uh, synopsis is uh, Alice <laughs> disappears. <laughs> disappears. <laughs> she dies. As if the, there's any suspicion. The first two thirds of that synopsis yeah. cover the first ten minutes of the film. <laughs> yeah. Right. Before we talk about the specifics of each film, mm. uh, of each murder, rather, I want to talk about Jason. Yeah. Right. Okay. So we need to talk about Jason. Yeah, we need to talk about Jason. So Jason gets into difficulty swimming in nineteen fifty three. This is this is a fact, right? And he was presumed dead. Yes. Right. Somehow his body was never found in a lake or a surrounding area right. for nearly thirty years. Yes. Right. Uh, long enough time for him to become a enormous feral man mm. with inexplicably shiny shoes. Yeah. Okay. Um, he he sees his mother being murdered, and he must see her being murdered because he has her head yeah. and a jumper that he, she's wearing. He retrieves that. Yeah. Mm. And he knows that Alice did it. Because he finds he her and kills her. Revenge, right? Yeah. yeah. How he figures out where Alice is. How he gets there. Yeah. Uh, does he drive? You know, who knows? Maybe Michael Myers taught him. It's a mystery. Um, is at one point he knows his mother is alive. Yeah. Because he sees her, he knows that that that's that's my mother yes. that I haven't I haven't spoken to or seen for thirty years. Yes. And who she, thinks that I'm dead? And then she's murdered. And then she's murdered, right? Why doesn't he? What? Why doesn't he get in contact with his mother? Well, at any point in 30 years. Maybe he's nervous. Nervous. Mm. That is a terrible, terrible <laughs> bit of reasoning. Like, he, he doesn't... So he manages... To, let's say... Because I, I assume that near drowning will leave you with psychological scars. Let's say lack of oxygen maybe left him mentally... Impaired. Sub, mentally yeah. impaired. Mm -hmm. Part of that leads to his murderous... You know, tendencies. Tendencies, mm -hmm. right. But... He survived thirty years in a wood mm. with no one finding him, without murdering that we know of anyone until Alice, who wasn't actually at the camp. No, he, so he had to leave camp to find her. Who and she? She presumably lived back at home. Yeah, in the city. Yeah. So she, then he returns back to his shack. Yeah. Where he presumably wants to return to a life of solitude. Yeah. He's disturbed by some counsellors. Yeah, who at first move into an adjacent campsite. Yeah. Then explore Camp Crystal Lake. Camp Blood. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which for some reason holds, or let's let's assume it's because his it's his shack is nearby. Mm -hmm. You know, his home turf. Um, he then kills Crazy Ralph. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I was, I was pleased to see him back. Yeah, sad uh, to see him go. Sad to see him go. Yeah, yeah. It's a shame. Uh, well, I have a question about the method. He he, what he does is garrotes him with barbed wire yeah. around a tree. Yeah. Now the method he'd either have to have the barbed wire wrapped around the tree before Ralph arrived in yeah. order to then like hold it above his head and then slip it down. Yeah. I mean, you got the benefit of being in the room with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see, I see what you mean. Yeah. Or he'd have to. It would have to. It would be noticeable to Ralph unless it was above or below his. Line of sight. Yeah, and already wrapped down the tree. Yeah. Yeah. And he'd have to... Well, either way, he'd have to loop it over Ralph. Yeah. Anyway. And, and around a tree. I mean, his, how so wide are his diabolical. arms? So, yeah. you know, the mentally ill angle doesn't quite work, does it? No. He, he just it's thought through. Yeah. He's, he's probably got the makings of an engineer. Yeah, it's mm. true. Yeah, he must have... Well, he's, he also learned rope traps as well. Yeah, and learned how to build a house. Yeah. Let's not forget. So he's. I, I find the character of Jason really confusing. Mm. If it was, like, I think I think it it was. I was. I've been struggling with it since the reveal in Friday the Thirteenth one, where it was actually a frail old woman who yeah. was doing all these murders, right? But at least that makes some sort of internal sense in terms of Revenge. I get why she wants to do it. Yeah. Right? In this, I understand why Jason, who for some reason 
has made no attempt to contact his mother that we know of for 30 years. <laughs> yeah. um, Suddenly wants uh, revenge for her. her yeah. Advice. Well, and like, but presumably, like, does, like, imagine you're a, like, a st- how old was he when he nearly drowned? Like seven years old or yeah, something? something like that. So imagine you're a seven year old who nearly drowns. At what point do you make the decision to not seek any help <laughs> and go, do you, you just walk into the wood, a feral child, yeah. and go, this is my life now. Yeah. And this is, this is how I'm going to live it, right? There's, there's one character, Ginny, in fact, the survivor. Mm. She's got, she's sort of almost mocked for having like a child psychology qualification. Yeah. And um, she says, is it that where she says, what would he be like today? Some kind of out of control psychopath? A frightening retard? A child trapped in a man's body? Yeah. But I don't, no, none of those things account for why, like, because... I, I'm aware that at later points in this series, mm. Jason becomes essentially like immortal or yeah. you know indestructible or whatever. But at this point in the film series, and I know you have to assume, wait, like you know, you have to think, oh, there may be information that we're not privy to. Yeah. But there's no, there's not a single supernatural element in this whole film series after two films, no. right? And nothing to suggest that Jason is anything other than just a big brawny man. Well, I do have. I mean, the the crazy ending, the, right? Where is it a dream? Isn't it a dream? That is spread across two movies now. Yeah. Right. So, suppose we say Jason died on that lake twenty years ago. Yeah. Then, one year ago, he was. I mean, talking in the time. Say we're we're in the film. Yeah. 82 or whatever it is. Yeah. So Jason died 20 years ago. Then a year ago, he jumps out of the lake mm. and pulls Alice in. But then she wakes up and that was a dream. Mm. But was it a dream? Because she kind of thinks, oh, he's still out there, right? Implying yeah. that he is. And then it turns out he is still out there. But, but he's not a child. Yeah. So either he aged like 20 years and in, grew in the space of six foot like four. Five years, yeah. Yeah. Well, no, in the space of like two months because two months later he kills Alice. Yeah, it's true. So, but my, I, I think my assumption is basically that the ja- child Jason pulling Alice into the lake was a dream. Was a dream, right? Uh, or a nightmare. Let's not get into that again. Yeah, and um, simultaneously to and apart from that, right. Jason Voorhees is alive by coincidence as a grown man, right? By coincidence, because he never died. So her. Some, her, her conclusion that Jason is still out there is correct, but based on faulty reasoning. reasoning yeah. Because she's making that assumption after having a dream that he was in. Mm-hmm. But actually, he is out there, but it's nothing to do with the, the apparition that pulled her into the lake. Right. But then at the end of this film, <laughs> yeah. Jason, the man, the adult, yeah. jumps through the window to kill Ginny. Ginny. But then that turned out to be a dream. Did it, did it turn out to be a dream, though? Well, she wasn't killed. No, but she, she wakes up. She may have been knocked unconscious and then wakes up when the ambulance arrives. But why did he spare her? I don't know. Why did he jump through the window and then just go, I may have been. It may have been that Paul, off screen, I mean, <laughs> this, is, this is making an assumption. Yeah, yeah. Right? Paul off screen manages to fend Jason off in a way that pushes him back towards, you know, away from Ginny, right? Paul then wounds Jason to the extent that Jason has to retreat, but in wounding him, is also killed. But we don't know he's dead. No, I know, yeah. We don't know where he is at all. No. Ugh. It's, I tell you what, the, that's a, it's a really bad ending. Yeah, it's a really, really. It's, bad I mean, it's, it's like saying it was all a dream. Yeah. But oh, was it a dream? It, it's, At least the, the ending of the first film was we, like just. It's like just a jump scare for the yeah, second film, yeah. isn't it? But at least that had a sort of weird. But I got a smile. Conclusive, out of that, conclusive I, feel. To I did it, enjoy that. Yeah. Whereas this one, it was like, what? Has I, happened? I'm, I'm just vexed. I was hoping you'd be able to shed some light on it. I, I, I don't. I don't know, in all honesty. Mm. There's, there's not a lot I can tell you. 
I struggle to think whether this is better than Friday the Thirteenth One. In some in some ways, I think it is. But one one problem that I think that I have with this film is that it mirrors Friday the Thirteenth Part One almost identically. Right. right. I mean, there's a lot of harking back. Yeah. And it's like the dream. Obviously, that's the most obvious thing. Yeah. Um, crazy. Is the one I did like? Crazy Ralph hiding in the pantry. Yeah, exactly. And he's yeah. dead in the pantry. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, uh, it, like you know, there's 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 little nods. There's a difference between like having nice little touches, like the soundtrack again, mm. like the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all well, that sort of stuff. That's like oh, that's you know nice. Then, like there's 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 other elements which are sort of more abstract, like there's the killer cam vision, and then they subvert that in the opening scene, yeah. where. Um, She's in the Alice is in the shower and mm-hmm. the camera goes right up to the shower and she whips back the shower curtain, but it's nothing. There is yeah, no. But that's just that's not subversive. <laughs> it's just confusing. Yes, yeah, it's bizarre. Yeah, yeah. but you, then you, then you, it'll, go, it'll go back to the killer cam and you're like, oh well, now it's killer cam again. Yeah, but it's yeah. I, I yeah. I, I also I also found it weird. Right, yeah. but I mean that's like a, an abstract element that's like borrowed from or like a reference to yeah. the first film. The point at which they will turn up to the camp. After that, it becomes almost like like a remake, mm. like a remake like three years after the first film. Yeah, like you've got all the different people. Like I said, that you can you basically get their characters in one word, word or <laughs> sentence. I I do think, however, that some of the characters are a bit better developed than some than the characters in the first film. Oh, so right. like being so Ginny yeah. Ginny's like I I like the sort of child psychology, cod psychology angle. That's like interesting that, you know, she would you know, it, because it's a vehicle through which we gain an understanding about Jason. Right. Because right. she's she's she verbalising she what, yeah. what people, you know. Um and then, you know, a couple of the other characters are sort of all right. But, but, but basically they're like, you know, there's like the greaser, the sporty one, mm. the one in the wheelchair. Yeah. We'll get, I'll come to that. Yeah, he gets his own section. Right. The one who fancies the one in the wheelchair, which mm-hmm. is pretty much the only development he gets. The guy who runs the camp. Is the the two, ginger guy. Oh, the, the, the joker. Yeah. And then Ginny. Well, there are others as well, but they're, they're not even... And then there's named. the couple who get speared... Through the bed, and there's the, there's bed. the skinny dipping girl as well. I mean, she's the sporty one. Oh right, yeah. But like they they they, I mean like I guess this is what a slash film is, isn't it? It's like, yeah. but what I mean, yeah. You, what do you expect? It's, yeah, but like I expect to to not watch the same film that we watched ten weeks ago, almost identically. I mean, like the the methods of their the the ways they're killed are different. Yeah. But that's almost almost the only thing that's different. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, even down to you know as soon as they go to have sex, they're gonna die. Yeah, but that's I mean that's same as any horror film. It's a trope, isn't it? Film. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just think it's it's an odd. I just think it's an odd film. Yeah, it's like they're trying to draw on all the the thing, like every shot, even. Yeah. Like the girl goes to get changed, ready for for, for sex, but it, in the first minute it's for bed. Yeah. And he's actually being watched. Oh God, it's just. <laughs> Well, should we talk about how they died? Because that was at least... Sure, yeah. All right, so we, we mentioned Crazy Ralph. First, yeah. first to die in the camp. Yeah. Um, with how wire. do you get barbed wire out of a tree? That's yeah. The, the next one to die per police, the policeman. Mm-hmm. Who... Well, I mean, we, we're, like, like I said, we're a big fan of inept policemen. Yes. But he see, he, his death is because he sees Jason cross the road mm-hmm. ahead of him when he's driving and stops his car, jumps out and gives chase through the woods. And that takes a good five minutes of him running from different yeah. angles. And the only tension they've got is basically dum 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 Right? Yeah. Actually I think it's string music, so it's more like ding 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 Yeah, it's it's quite sort of psycho esque, isn't it? Right, it goes on too long, <laughs> like that. Yeah. And then when he gets there, he, he, he stumbles across something, which we later know to be the shrine, mm-hmm. and he receives a claw hammer to the back of the head. Yeah. Claw end first. Yeah. The next guy to die is, <laughs> uh, he's caught in a snare. He's yeah. He's kind of like... 
rope is a rope trap thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's the 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 jock sort of guy. Yeah. He's caught by his ankles and has his throat cut mm-hmm. while he's subdued. Yeah. Then the sporty girl returns. We don't actually see her die. No. She just gives it gives a yelp, and yeah. then we see her body later on. So yeah, she definitely does. And now you get Mark, who's uh, the wheelchair guy. Yeah. He dies from a machete to the face. Yeah. Which the the force of which sends him, <laughs> him his back down yeah. a flight of stairs. <laughs> um, yeah. Then there's the couple having sex. Yeah. You get one Sandra spear between and Jeff through through the yeah. pair of them. Then the girl who is with Mark, Vicky. So Vicky goes upstairs to find the bodies of her friends mm-hmm. uh, hanging, um, you know, murdered. Mm-hmm. And she's killed off. She's killed. Um, oh no, she's killed. Uh, her, first of all, he's Jason is laying in the bed, mm-hmm. as yeah. he's laying in wait. Yeah. And as first we see of him, like his his head, mm-hmm. and he goes, he's wearing a, a burlap sack for a mask, basically. Mm-hmm. So he slashes her quadricep, mm. and she stumbles backwards, and then becomes basically inanimate. Yeah. And gets killed. Yes. And that's that's all the deaths that are confirmed. Yeah. Paul does have a fight with Jason. Yeah. But survives that. Presumably, we can't. It's, we don't know. It's, it's it's a big big leap. Yeah. To Jason make. does get killed, but he comes back apparently. Yeah. Well, do we know that for well, sure? We don't, we don't, well, we do know because we know that there's another movie. But yeah, but is in? Do we know whether he's actually dead? Confirmed dead? Who yeah. knows? It's it's not it's not brilliant on storytelling. No, it isn't. Um, yeah, like. All, through this film I was waiting for them to sort of do something interesting or different with the formula yeah and they just they, just they don't. didn't no. they don't and I, I have a nasty feeling for the next two years yeah. we're going to have that uh, <laughs> we're going to have to watch the same formula repeated rinsed and yeah repeated. I have a feeling you're right um, but what did you like about it um, like I said I did find some of the characters a bit more appealing like, which I've already gone into um, they are, for the most part, not great no. in in movie terms, but they were they were decent. You know, I felt I felt bad. Like I want to talk about the the wheelchair the wheelchair guy, Mark. Mm-hmm. It's probably not very good to call him the wheelchair, wheelchair well, the, guy. I mean, the, the movie, man who the is movie in, more or less <laughs> does that. Yeah, yeah. Um, is it? Am I too PC in thinking that having a wheelchair bound victim? is like a bit inappropriate. I think it is possible to have a murder victim who is wheelchair bound. Yeah. But I don't think uh, the filmmakers in this movie had any sort of taste in mind. It's, it's they, they weren't going for like equal opportunities murders. They were going, this would be funny. It's almost entirely arbitrary that he's mm. in a wheelchair as well. Yeah. But it's never like his wheelchair gets stuck in the mud. Or he gets pushed down a hill, right? No, but I mean he when he dies, well, yeah, he does. That's kind of is like, that is that the only reason that they put him in a wheelchair? Do you think? But it's not even that good a shot. No, it's I almost know. like they're like, oh damn, we put him in a wheelchair. It's like Naked Gun esque. Yeah, like the end of the Naked Gun where Frank lets go of uh, O.J. Simpson. Mm. He's in a wheelchair and he rolls down the stairs of the stadium and like flips, yeah, yeah. like does five front flips off the balcony. That's what it reminded me of. Mm. But it's, it's bizarre, isn't it? It's like, I don't know if you're supposed to... I don't know if you're supposed to think... You're supposed to, are you supposed to be more scared for him? Like, are you supposed to be more scared during the scenes where he's being stalked? Because it's like, oh, God, imagine imagine you're being stalked by a killer and you're in a wheelchair. Yeah, or is it like, this is going to be... Is it meant to be? Like, this is going to be funny because he's in a wheelchair. Or is it? Or is it like it's even worse because he's in a wheelchair? Jason will even kill people in a wheelchair. Or like, is it? I'm just. There's so many elements of this film where I'm just like, I don't understand why you've done that. Yeah, yeah what is happening? I don't know why this is in the film. I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't matter why. Like, he's in a wheelchair. I'm not going. I wish there wasn't someone in a wheelchair in the film. I'm just yeah. saying, like, it's like why make him? Yeah, it isn't. Like, there's no why make him be in a wheelchair. Yeah. You could say, maybe it is equal opportunity. Maybe they're saying the fact that we're asking why he's in a wheelchair it makes us the baddies. Maybe. Maybe we're just as bad as Jason. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. I mean, like, did you find anything that you liked about the film? 
I don't know. You mentioned character development just now. Yeah. And I, I disagree. I think they're just as flat as the last one. Yeah. There's, a, there's an episode of Tom and Jerry from, I don't know, where Tom and Jerry was in the 50s, in which Jerry the mouse receives a visit from his uncle, who mm-hmm. is a country music veteran. Right. And he keeps playing a song, Froggy Went Accordion. He plays Froggy Went Accordion, and he do it. Much to the chagrin of Tom the cat, who I, I can't remember exactly whether he finds it annoying, but the string keeps breaking. Right. And he, whenever it does, Tom laughs and he pulls one of his whiskers out and uses that as a string. Right. So you've got, I mean, he's got six whiskers, that happens five times, and each time the, the joke's on Tom. Yeah. The uncle goes off to play a TV show, and Jerry and Tom are watching it on TV, and he's playing Froggy Went to Court in. And his string snaps, and Tom starts laughing, and the mouse reaches through the TV and steals his whisker, and it's really funny. That's the punchline, isn't right. it? He can't get away from it. That sort of five-minute cartoon had more character development, <laughs> more twists, and is more memorable than anything in, in Friday, Friday the 13th yeah. Part 2. Yeah. Did you just watch that cartoon? Like? I haven't seen it in 15 years, probably. <laughs> it came in my mind earlier, and I was like... Why am I thinking about that? And I'm, I can't remember parts of a film I saw last night. Yeah. That's telling. It's, um, yeah, especially in the context of it being part of that series, it's yeah. really unmemorable. Yeah. yeah. Although I, I've heard people who are Friday the 13th fans yeah. say that it is the, the sort of iconic one. Is the iconic not, is the iconic one not Friday the 13th part three because I believe that's when he gets his mask. The one where it sort of finds its feet in terms of production values perhaps. Right, okay. Because the first one's dreadful. It made, it's made on like a handy cam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one, it, at least the, they learn how to edit. Yeah, yeah. And the third one, I go, well, we'll have to look forward to that. Yeah, in 10 weeks' time. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, Is Jason developmentally disabled? Well, we were, we were discussing this earlier. Like, is it... Because he must... Living, living in a wood for... However many years on your own will have had some effect. Yeah, but is he? I mean, the word was they he used, originally developmentally disabled. Yeah, the, the word they use in the film is retarded. Yeah, but that's you know that's a hangover from the era, isn't it? I think. Yeah, but okay. But okay. like that just that's like saying someone is slow. So it doesn't necessarily mean actually development, like you know, educationally challenged or right. you know, educationally subnormal. Is he though? Um, because he he. Is I think what well, it, it might he might be whether or not it's it's genetic or it's whether it's nature or nurture yeah. we don't know because obviously he's had a significant lack of nurturing <laughs> yeah. for however many years but I, I, mean, he, I think he was based on the shots we see of him flailing in the water he he looks like he's genetically disordered. <laughs> Right, you said of, this in the first episode. I'm not sure. Well, look at him when he jumps through the, at the end as well. Yeah, so he does have. He has a sort of scarred face, is it? It's all disfigured. It's like it's grown badly. Yeah. I think there's an issue at the chromosomal level. Whether he's got too many or too few, I don't know. <laughs> but right. there's certainly an issue in. He, he doesn't look like a person should look, and he doesn't act like a person should act. That's true. Yeah, he's he's not got the he's certainly not got the social values. No. Yeah, I, well, it, yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe in Friday the 13th Part 3, the reason everyone loves it so much is because there's so much character development Yeah, in Jason. They say, look, would, any questions you had before, we'll address they them on top. They're all answered, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Well, you know the, the head of Mrs. Voorhees? Mm-hmm. Were you waiting for it to open his eyes? Because it looked like it was an animatronic head. Yeah, yeah. And it is like... I feel like maybe they, it was. So the original ending yeah. was that it zoomed into the head and the head opened its eyes and smiled. Right. And they cut that ending. Why? Um, too, too far-fetched. Too it confusing. was too over the top, apparently. Oh, was it? Too confusing yeah. for, the, for the viewers at home. Oh, I mean, I, I don't know where you draw the line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then we all saw that it was animatronic. Yeah, it's a weird, like, wax head, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And the eyes are cut, like, beveled out. It's, yeah. Um, well, I was, yeah. I, you know what, though? I, I, I was going to see Betsy Palmer 
uh, reprise her role of Mrs. Yeah. Voorhees for this Cause one. Because there's the there's the bit where um, Ginny takes on the role of uh, yeah. Paramount Voorhees. As any, any child psychologist Puts on the, puts on the jumper yeah. and um, pretends to be Jason's mother. Yeah. And it works to an extent. Well, we'll, t- we'll talk about that maybe when we come to talk about how to survive. Yeah, but I, I mean, it was good to see her back in it. I doubt yeah. she'll be around for the third one. No, I have a feeling probably not. Uh, but, you know, remains to be seen. Yeah. I imagine she still... Remains to be seen, not unlike Mrs. Voorhees herself. Yes, very good. <laughs> so, Chris, if you were unlucky enough to find yourself at not Camp Crystal Lake, but a neighbouring <laughs> lake... <laughs> yeah. What would you do? How would you survive? So, um, as ever, the key to survival is staying sober, virginal, and above all, having no interest in camping or belonging to a campsite. Now, this breaks, and this is what a lot of people would say, mm. right? Unfortunately, this breaks our podcast rules, yeah. which we haven't recapped in a while. Yeah. So, should we go through them? Yes, please. So, there are five podcast rules. Rule number one, you must observe the established rules of the film, including setting, resources, capabilities of individuals. That means you can't build a time machine and go back to before the Hunger Games started and just Mm. prevent it happening. Equally, you can't kill Jason with a lightsaber. Yeah, because people don't have lightsabers in the film. Rule two, unless otherwise stated, you must assume the role of the character, if we're talking about a specific character, Mm -hmm. including their motivations, abilities, etc. So, as a 24-year-old man from the UK... I would have absolutely no business being on an island in the Pacific with a group of Japanese school children. Or indeed a camp by a lake in yeah. America. That's yeah. not a valid defence because you have to take on the role. Yeah. Equally, you can't punch Freddy Krueger in the face so hard that he dies instantly. Unless, unless you're incredibly strong. Yeah. Yeah, all the characters. Yeah. <laughs> now, rule three, this is a big one. You can't assume things we don't already know. So, you can't say, I'd just use a mirror to block out the moonlight and that would stop me turning into a werewolf because you don't know that it would. Mm-hmm. Um, equally, you can't say, say, an alien, that you distract it with food just because it's hungry, because yeah. you don't know that it's hungry. Yeah. Rule four, unless specified, you cannot influence the fate or behaviour of any other characters. Exactly. So you can't say, I'd tell Carl Reese to run up to Arnold with a bag of grenades and blow himself up, because that would obviously affect the fate of Carl Reese himself. Yeah. And equally, uh, in the event of a zombie apocalypse, I'd just kill everyone in my house, freeze their bodies, and survive by eating them until help came. Interestingly, that is exactly what Carl Reese does. Really? Yeah, he puts a bomb in the rib cage of the Terminator, doesn't he? By sacrificing himself? I think so. He dies in the explosion, I'm sure. I can't remember. I know she kills him at the end by saying, you're Terminator fucker. He kills the Terminator, yeah. 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 Anyway, rule five. Mm -hmm. You must try to survive. Yep. You can't just bottle it. So no saying, this is too stressful, I'd just kill myself, or... I'd lead the zombie horde into the desert and sacrifice myself to save humanity. Yeah, you can't, you can't make yourself the hero. No. It? But, so, yeah, to say, oh, I'd stay sober, virgin, etc., mm-hmm. you can't really do that because none of the characters are, not even Ginny, the girl who's vibes. No, no. Um, really, well, it's, it might be assuming too much, might be rule three, but, you know, we see her, she has an established relationship with Paul already. Yeah. So... It's not too much of a stretch. No, it? exactly. Um, and also staying sober so if we think back to episode one joe when mm. we talked about friday the 13th the original yep um we have a lot of advice for um alice yes um because she was not so good at uh utilizing the things around her uh you know hiding running into the woods things like that she was very she drew out that fight far too long mm. Interestingly, Ginny appears to have been listening to the House of Fire podcast mm-hmm. um, because she utilised a number of the techniques that we suggested, yeah. um, like uh, using the stuff that's uh, around her to fight back. For example, Chekhov's chainsaw. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Introduced yeah, early in the film. Exactly, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, she runs into the woods, which is something that we suggested. Yeah. You know, like we, we said, you know, is there is there much chance of you being caught if you sprint into the woods? Yeah. Uh, possibly. I mean, then again, Jason does have traps everywhere. Yeah, that's true. So you it's going to be, it's gonna be tricky. Stumble into one. Yeah. Um, what I would say is that she doesn't help her friends in an active enough manner. Really? There's the scene where they return to the hut to mm. find the place deserted. Um, 
Blood in the Bed, which mm. they take very seriously this time. Yeah. Which is interesting. Laughing it off. Yeah. Um, rather than just going, oh, I'm sure there's an explanation for all this. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then Paul gets attacked by Jason. Yeah. And they scuffle, and Ginny stands there just going, Paul? You, right, I made, it, I made, I've literally written this down. Yeah. Her, her only sort of way to help him yeah. is to say his name over and over again. <laughs> like she's really, like she's Paul. in his corner. Paul. Like going, Paul, Paul, yeah. Paul. Yeah. It's really weird. Um, yeah, so my... And then she, then she gives him up for dead. Yeah, well, my, my method of survival, or, you know, my advice to her is to um, help your friends out mm. when they're in need. It's, it's works to, it serves to everyone's benefit if you yeah, um, team up against this giant of a man, mm. um, which is what they. And he is kind of did. busy, so if you just stab him in the back, yeah, mm. or in the head, or like mm. something, get the chainsaw. Yeah, it's true. Like you know, it's um, she. She doesn't do enough. I don't think they do enough. There's not enough coordination between them. Right. There. So if they talk to each other. Yeah, they'd exactly. Be able to empower him. They're like a proper wrestling he hasn't got duo. A teammate. Or someone. Yeah, mm. it'd be good. I've got a, a one idea on how to survive, which is just go to the bar with everyone else and stay there <laughs> and till stay closing. stay there until closing yeah. time. Go to the lock-in. Yeah, because yeah. I thought the Joker, yeah. uh, Ed, well, yeah, or Ted, whatever his name was, his name was yeah. it, I thought he was going to be dead for sure. Yeah. But yet he stayed for a drink and got to live through everything. I wonder if he's in Friday the 13th Part 3. Well, maybe he picks up at the bar. Maybe he's not laughing so much. Anymore. Yeah, maybe. Is he? I don't know. Oh, I thought you were... No, 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 this is no, this is not premonition. No. So, yeah. Is it a dream? No. Um, well, the one other way I'd survive, mm-hmm. and this is based on advice given to us by Paul, yeah. who says, contrary to what everyone hears, bears are dangerous. Right? Okay. So, we know there's bears <laughs> in the woods surrounding Camp Crystal <laughs> Lake. Yeah. So, and I also, okay, this may be me assuming something, but yeah. this, is how I, this is how I read the film. I think he made a joke about how to save yourself from bears, and I think he mentioned women on their periods drawing bears nearer, because there's a scene with him and Ginny where they don't sleep together, right. and she says, I have something to tell you, and you don't actually see them have sex, and mm-hmm. the next morning she wakes up, and there's in lipstick, I think, on the mirror, mm-hmm. it says, beware of bears, or watch out for bears. So I'm, I'm aware that among... Among people who grew out into the great wilderness, yeah. it's commonly considered dangerous to be on your period because bears smell blood and they're drawn to it. Right. So what I would do if I was <laughs> Ginny. Yeah. And she I I don't think it's too much of a assumption to say she's on her period. Okay, alright. All okay. those bears okay. is <laughs> right. go into the woods and climb a tree <laughs> and just wait until the bear comes along. And yeah. hope that it, its presence is enough to scare Jason away. But then you've got to deal with a bear. Well, <laughs> <laughs> maybe Jason and the bear would fight each other. Uh, and and it would be match. a mutually assured destruction. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a. I think. I like the idea. Mm. I think it's not unfair to say that it's a risky suggestion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's recap. So you're. In this situation, you're Ginny. Yeah. You get back to the hut, right? And everyone's deserted. Mm. So, are you are you saying that she? So she she sees the killer, and she says her immediate response. She, her immediate response yeah. is to go right, run into the woods, and climb a tree, a and you're use you're her menstrual blood mm. to attract a bear at very short notice. Especially considering Jason has access to a chainsaw. <laughs> well, I I'm mean, not saying it's a flawless. Point. Yeah, no. I'm saying okay. All I've given you, Chris, is the foundations of an idea. Yeah. What you do with it is oh, the, you've given us the building blocks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's bears out there, and you can attract bears. Okay. That's what we know. Okay. <laughs> are the, okay. All right. I have one final suggestion. Mm. Uh, for Ginny, which is that she makes better use of um, when she's dressed as his mother, right? And is apparently able to coerce him yeah, into yeah. things. Um, firstly, hide the head. 
before he comes in the room. Yeah. Or or wear it. Mm. Is that going a bit too far? Probably. Yeah. Hide the head. No one wants to touch the head. Because it is it is jarring to see the same person in two different locations. Mm. And that's what that's what th- it's a clues bit of a Jason cognitive in. Cognitive dissonance. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. So hide the head, uh, go, oh well done Jason, you know, all this sort of thing. Uh, and then go, um now mum mother would like like you to go for a swim. <laughs> <laughs> Go Can out we, into the woods and look for a bear. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you. I'd, I'd really like you to go for a swim now, Jason. Yeah. You know how I like your swimming, and we know Jason's very bad, bad at swimming. swimming. That's been established from so day one. Coerce Jason through taking the appearance of his mother, right? Yeah. Because the because the only thing that we know for sure clues him in that it's not really his mother is the sight of his real mother's head <laughs> yeah. on a bench, right? So if you hide that, that's out of the equation. And then from that point onwards, you can comfortably <laughs> lead him down to the lake, go, off you, off you go, I Jason. You jump in. Do, I want to see a length of the lake. Mm. I'm sure you can do it. He swims out and you run away. Yeah. Don't look back now, Jason. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll, I will be, I'll be here. I like that one. That's better than my one, actually, because it's um, <laughs> not reliance on other outside predators. forces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then all you've got to rely on is Paul not showing up. Yeah. And because if he goes, oh, Ginny, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> but you're not Mrs. Voorhees. <laughs> Why are you wearing Mrs. Voorhees jumper? Ginny, Ginny, you're not Mrs. Voorhees. <laughs> Mrs. Voorhees is dead. <laughs> In fact, it is a hint. Ginny, stop pretending to be Mrs. Voorhees. You're stood next to Jason Voorhees, her son, who witnessed her murder. Jason, don't you remember when you saw your mother's murder? And then you kept her head in a shack for 30 years. Five years. Sorry. What a mug. Yeah. Well, you got, you got the numbers wrong, Chris, so we'd have to end it there. Yeah. Well, that was Friday the 13th. Part two. Part two. Um, well, if you were, <laughs> you're looking forward to the next Friday the 13th review. Yeah. Uh, it'll be in 10 weeks. Yeah. Uh, we've got a lot lined up before then, actually. Yeah. Um, but stay tuned to find out. And uh, you can always go to howtosurviveshow.com to find out more. Mm-hmm. And email us if you liked the show, if you didn't like the show, if mm. you agree with us, if you disagree with us. If you've got better ways of surviving. Yeah. Yeah, do email howtosurviveshow at gmail.com. Thanks very much for listening. And remember, despite what you've heard, bears (laughs) are dangerous. (laughs) 